Hello everyone, Stefan here back on the French Cooking Academy and today is the most bizarre day because something just happened and I swear to God, it's true. You know when you watch these videos on YouTube and there's like this guy is like doing a streaming or something and then someone knocks at the door, he's like, oh, what's that? I'm receiving a package. And then he opens and you know, he gets something from YouTube or something like that. I swear to God, I was filming this just now about to repeat my sequence when someone knocked at the door to bring me this. <laughs> I swear to God, this is true. This is a true story. It actually happened. While I was filming, the bloody YouTube guys come and bring me a present from YouTube. I can't believe this. <laughs> this actually happened in my own home when I was filming. Wow. This is insane. Anyway, that's not part of the video. We'll do another video for that. Let's put this aside. This is just plain amazing. So today, super excited now. Baking time. As you can see, I've got the utensils. I've got everything. And we're going to learn to make the creme frangipane. It's an almond cream. And it's a, it's a cream that's used to fill cakes made out of puff pastry. Yeah? In France, this is called the uh, king cake usually, but we're not going to make that. We're just going to learn how to make the filling and using some pre-roll puff pastry, which is going to make some beautiful sweet almond cake. So let's not waste time and let's go. Now let's learn to make a creme frangipane or almond cream. It's a very good uh, cake filling to learn uh, and it's really, really delicious. Well, that if you like almonds. So brief tour of the ingredients uh, for the pastry cream. You, there's two components uh, to that recipe. Uh, the first component is the pastry cream, crème pâtissière in French. And the second component is that mix with the almond meal, etc. So we start with the crème pâtissière making. These are the ingredients roughly. We've got some sugar, egg yolk, uh, vanilla extract, some uh, full cream milk, some uh, corn starch or corn flour. And I've just got a, a fine mesh sieve and a, and a bowl. So let's start. Now the pastry cream is a bit of a recap huh, because we've seen that before. Uh, but uh, let's cover that quickly. So when you make the pastry cream, you start on the stove. So the pan first, low heat, take all of the milk in there. We're just making a small quantity here uh, and just a few drops of uh, vanilla essence. That's like one or two teaspoons. And I'm going to gently warm up that milk. As soon as the milk uh, starts to warm up, so very quickly, and you're going to put the two egg yolks in there. I'll put the ingredients in the video description, the sugar, and immediately you're going to start to incorporate both together and whiten the eggs with the sugar. And we call it in French blanchir les oeufs. So as you can see here, when you go fast like that, they're getting whiter. You see, I'm just going to continue like this to whisk for about 20 to 30 seconds. All done. As soon as you got your white mix and you're going to take your corn flour, put it in a sieve and I'm just going to pass that through over. Always use a little sieve like that huh, because in, uh, in baking and very gently. Now we're going to take all that corn flour and incorporate it with that egg and sugar mix. So remember, I'm making a very small amount here. Uh, of a pastry cream today. Yeah? Most likely by the time you're done with the eggs, your milk here will be hot enough. You can turn the heat off and we're going to pour it over the egg mix. So our milk is nice and warm and we're going to start to pour it in that mix. So again, I'm using that little sieve and you're going to do this in a, just in two times. So just a little bit first and you're going to catch the cream and stuff and very gently we're going to start to incorporate and you don't put everything at once to try to avoid the clumps eh, that can form. Eh? So when you add a little bit like this, you see what happened? You first dilute with the base mix, making sure there's no clumps. And when it's nice and liquid, you can basically pour the rest. It's not much, eh? it's just a little bit of cream. And then you mix the whole lot again. Don't whisk vigorously because otherwise it's going to foam a lot. Huh? So try to be gentle. Next, when you're done, as you can see here, you see 
and the nice color is below that, but there's always foam. So you try to use one of these little sieve there and you're gonna scoop off as much as you can. Not everything, but do the best to just, you know, remove the excess of foam, let's say, before we put that back in the pan. That will do. Okay, when that's done, you use the same saucepan that we had to warm up the milk. You use the same sieve and you filter again everything, capturing some of the foam again. Oh, sorry. And we're gonna go back on the stove with our pan. When the pan is back on the stove, you put the heat on, on medium. Uh, and you're gonna take your whisk and very gently, you know, keep on stirring like that until the mix thicken and trans transform into that pastry cream. It doesn't take long, especially for small amount like that. So keep an eye on it. I'm gonna keep on stirring this for like a minute or so and then we're gonna check the results. All right, so after a minute or so, as you can see the cream, you see the bottom, look at that. The eggs start to cook, which is normal. You can reduce your heat now. And a lot of people ask me, oh my God, you know, my eggs are cooking. It is normal. Pastry cream, you cook your eggs. So as soon as it's solidified, you can almost put your, you know, your heat on very, very low. And look what happened. You see, that's the consistency you get. A very thick kind of mix. Okay, so as soon as it's thick like this, you don't need to work it for ages. You just turn your heat off and we're gonna reserve it in another container and leave it on the sides. Always when you make pastry cream, you need to remove it from the pan. So I'm gonna put my whisk aside. And so I've got my saucepan here and I'm gonna put everything in a clean container. As you can see, it's still very warm. And that's in an effort to make it cool down a bit faster. All right. As soon as it's in, there is an addition, 15 grams of butter in this case, and just a little nudge of butter. And then we're gonna mix that with the pastry cream. Give it a nice texture. You see it becomes a bit liquid like that. And you're gonna whisk it until it becomes, you know, kind of a creamy consistency again. And when that's done, for that preparation, you're just gonna leave this on the side. You're not gonna put this in the fridge. We're gonna let it cool down at room temperature. Uh, so when the butter is in like this, that's the consistency we've got. See, it's still very thick. That's what we want. So we leave it at that. We're now ready to start the second element, which is the almond uh, buttercream. Uh, let's call it that way. And this is the cream you can use on its own for certain filling for tarts. But the crème we're making today is the crème frangipane, which is that cream we're gonna make mixed with the pastry cream. So you always just start with a softened butter. And the butter is very fragile. It has to be soft like this. Huh? So you can see, I can just really... Uh... And you have to be very gentle with that preparation because butter doesn't really like to be mixed well. So if your sugar like that is a bit uh, to course, huh? just doing this to show you, as you can see, a lot of people sometimes ask me, why do you use a sieve? That's the reason, you see? You get these kind of clumps in. So the best thing to do again, grab a sieve and then filter your icing sugar. What I usually do, I, I use one of these large sieve. I put everything in there, you see, with all the clumps. Take a spoon and I just grate everything like that over. And see what you get? That's very, very nice mix. And I'm gonna do this in two times. So a little bit of sugar, I'm discarding it. And then I'm gonna to start to incorporate with the butter. Huh? And be very gentle for the beginning, huh? because I'm telling you, the butter is fragile, doesn't like to be whisked or anything like this. Otherwise it may deassociate and it kind of separates. So spatula, and you mix like this, huh? very gently, flatten it like that. And then we're gonna add more sugar. More sugar in. Basically finish everything. Hold on. All the sugar is in. And again, I'm gonna start to incorporate that with my butter until all of the sugar has disappeared. 
Still being very, very gentle with your butter. You'll see why later on, if it ever happens. You need to have that consistency of a cream, nice and smooth. Once you're finished with your sugar, next step is the other dry ingredient, is the almond meal. A half of it to start with, and same thing. You're gonna take your spatula and very gently, I'm stressing this really, because the butter can really go funny. Now it can really uh, kind of separate in a weird way, so always very gentle, incorporate, put more, incorporate again. And this is really this baking, you know, baking is always so tricky, you know, you have to be very gentle, make sure everything is cohesive, you know, I'm learning so much in there. So you see it's a bit creamy and grainy, okay? That's all done. Lastly, a teaspoon of corn flour. Huh? Same thing. Put that in, and it's a cream. Okay, last ingredient is a full egg. And I'm just making enough cream here to make a small cake that will be enough for like about four people. So you can, I'm gonna use a little bit of puff pastry to make a small cake, but you can multiply the, the amounts. Huh? So as you can see here, it becomes very liquid. And don't be tempted to start whisking like hell because this is where usually things go wrong. So take your time uh, and using that spatula, you're just going to keep on whisking like that. If you find it easier, you can beat your egg first. It's not really a, a big thing, but you can do it if you want. Uh, and you mix slowly until you get that kind of liquidish type of mix that we've got here. All right. That's the kind of consistency I've got. That's ready. Now we can add the pastry cream. Our pastry cream has now rested on the side. Huh? It's now here, it's nice and firm. And as you can see, it's a little bit stiff like that. So what I tend to do, I add a little bit of rum, huh? just like it's maybe a tablespoon. And I'm gonna make sure that my cream is a little bit more, weak, uh, more workable, sorry. Huh? So that you can whisk, it's not a problem. And we're gonna warm it up, like this with a whisk or a spatula, and make sure, see it sticks a little bit, make sure it becomes a bit of a cream. So you take it out of the whisk like this, keep on whisking it for a minute until you get a nice cream. So let me do that off camera, as you can see it's a bit sticky. So as we've just seen with the whisk, it gets entangled, and this is because it's always more difficult to work with small portion uh, of cream or anything like that, when you do a small portion, everything becomes difficult. And there's not enough liquid, there's not enough mass, because as soon as you move it, what's happening, it gets into a bowl. And so this is why I prefer doing larger portion. But you can use a, like a spoon, a wooden spoon like that, uh, and you can, some elbow grease always kind of fix the problem. Huh? So you get that kind of creamy consistency back like that. No, and that's enough. Now we're going to add this in our cream. So as we've just seen, you can see the pastry cream was very solid, very stiff. I see here, it's still, still like a block, uh, even though we've put a little bit of liquid. And that mix we have here, on the other hand, is very, very runny. And that's the initial cream. But in the pastry world, it's amazing how things can change very quickly. So that pastry cream, in my, in my head, as a cook, you know, I would think that that is never going to be like getting liquid or whatever. But think again, because in, in the pastry world, anything happens. That pastry cream, if you had a little bit too much liquid into it, it will transform into a liquidish kind of mess, I'm telling you. So I've put the pastry cream in, and again, you can see the moisture that is contained in that runny mix is going to kind of equalize yeah, well, I don't know if it's the right term, but it's going to blend with the pastry cream and it's going to change the texture of the whole thing. Yeah, and if I was to follow my mind of a cook, I would be like, oh, that, that needs more cream. I'm going to add the whole... Of no, no. You have to be precise in the measurement and gentle. And look at that. Do you see any kind of bowl of, of uh, you know, pastry and cream being difficult? No. That thing is just being incorporated and is going to disappear totally in that mix. And so you're going to keep on very, being very gentle like that. 
Press it down like this until you get a nice and smooth kind of mix and that's going to be ready. When that's done, you're going to put this in the fridge and let it rest for 10 minutes. Okay, so how uh, creme frangipane now is almost ready, it has cooled down in the fridge. And before we start to take the dough out and the puff pastry and start working with it, you need to have everything ready. When I, what I mean by that is that you need the tray on which you're going to cook uh, this cake. So in this case, I'm using a simple tray with the silicone mat. I'll put this in the, the link in the video description. It's super handy, doesn't stick, it's great. Egg wash. What is an egg wash? It's a full egg. And a lot of people ask me with a tablespoon of water that you're just gonna beat like this with a fork and we're gonna use that to brush the top of our cake. Egg wash, done. I'm gonna be using a baking brush and this is like a dough cutter. You will see why after we're gonna use it. So when we've got everything ready, the last thing to do is to preheat your oven at 220 degrees Celsius, uh, which would be, uh, I don't know, 400 plus Fahrenheit, I'll put the conversion. Uh, and it has to be ready as soon as we're done, it has to go in the oven. So let's get ready and we take the puff pastry out. Okay, so I've rolled out my dough and to make it simple today, I'm not going to make any fancy kind of shapes or anything. I'm going to take the simple rectangle of puff pastry and I'm going to cut it in half and to make one kind of cake. Huh? So, because I want everyone to be able to make that, that recipe. So we're going to keep it very simple. As soon as I've got, I, you know, this two shape, I'm going to take one, so I'll the mess there, and I'm going to put it on, sorry, in the back over there. So let me change the angle of the camera. Okay, I've changed the angle of the camera, and I remember when you work with pastry like this, with this uh, puff pastry and all, things have to go very fast. You need to have everything at hand. So as soon as the, uh, that first part of the, the rectangle, so one rectangle at the bottom, one at the top, we keep it very, very simple. The first thing you're gonna have to do is to brush only the edges with that egg wash to help the sticking. Because what can happen is that your cream is gonna try to escape. So that reduces the size inside to have our cream. Once you've done that, uh, we've got our cream here that we've made, so we've learned that. And we're going to have to layer a good amount of cream. Crème frangipane. It's a beautiful cream. And actually, you know, this time I'm going to try to be ultra generous because you want to have a lot of it in there. So I'm going to put everything. Okay, so I've got a small like spatula like this uh, and I'm going to try to uh, make it even and don't go on the edges. So you make a little even. So remember like when you're going to eat this, if you are the one that's eating a piece that doesn't have much of the cream, you're going to be like, ah, oh, there's not much cream in there. So think of that. Let's imagine you are the one having to bite on the edges. So make sure it goes near the edges. Okay, so you got the picture. As soon as you're done, you take some of the camera, you take the other rectangle of dough and you're gonna try to place it just on top of the other. <laughs> Look at that! I'm getting excited! <laughs> Perfect! Beautiful. Finally, it's time to seal because your worst enemy here is gonna be the cream trying to escape. So this is where that thing comes into play. You can use a, a simple fork, but what I'm doing, you know, I'm gonna basically flatten or even cut and press down the edges like that to seal everything. Like you see the edges with both sides of the dough and discard a little layer like that. And I know that this is pre-sealed everything and I'm gonna do two types of seal. So you go around and you cut all the edges to make sure they're sealed. And then we're going to do a final sitting with a fork. All right, the sitting is done. And then you can start by brushing the top of the dough with the egg wash. So be careful not to um, drip too much of the egg wash on the side. Otherwise, it might prevent uh, that lovely cake to rise. Huh? So just an initial layer. There will be plenty of layers huh, of egg wash. So just an initial one. Okay. And then with a fork, take a fork like that 
and I'm gonna even further seal all the edges uh, to make sure that nothing is gonna escape. I think I've just created some kind of giant ravioli. <laughs> this is how good I am at baking. But anyway, okay, we've got a layer of egg wash. It's all sealed and now we have to leave this in a fridge for 15 minutes and then apply another layer of egg wash, decorate and then cook it. 15 minutes has passed and uh, my big uh, ravioli here has, has uh, rested and I'm gonna do another layer, again a last layer of the egg wash. Huh? So as you can see in baking, nothing is simple. This is why it's so hard. There's nothing straightforward, even that simple recipe turns out to really take time. You know, so it's amazing how you have to be careful. Right, so we've got the egg wash. The last step is to decorate. So you can use a fork and, uh, you know, I'm just going to be very, uh, very boring. Uh, and just make some kind of a cross shape, uh, a bit of a rustic, uh, rustic thing. There we go. And now we're going to put this in the oven. So for the cooking, we're going to cook this first for 10 minutes at 220 degrees Celsius. I'll put the conversion on the screen. And then you reduce the heat to 170 degrees Celsius for a further 20 minutes. Okay, so first, 20, uh, sorry, first 10 minutes high and the next 20 minutes on low heat. Let's go. I'm going to put this and I'll take it out and show you the result. Okay. The big ravioli, <laughs> as I call it, is out of the oven. But look at this, what happened. It overpuffed and cracked a little bit because I tried to make a little hole with a knife and stuff. So not the best looking thing, but you know what? It doesn't matter because what's important, it's what's inside. The whole course today is about making that cream inside. Huh? So you can make a much better job than I do. Uh, the last step you're going to do is to take some honey with a teaspoon uh, of hot water. And very gently, we're going to coat the top of our cake with a bit of a glazing like that. Huh? So you just glaze the top of your, uh, of your creation yeah, so on this side as well, so it's nice and sweet. And we're going to leave it a good 15 minutes to you know, kind of cool down before we, uh, we can break it open and see what's inside. Mm, exciting! Well, guys, I think here we are, the uh, cake, or the big ravioli. Uh, there's a bit of a, of a hole here. And uh, let's break it open. So I thought, you know, I need half of this for my picture. So we're going to try to get that more messy part. And I'm just going to try to cut it gently. And see what's happening inside. Okay, that's roughly what it looks inside. Mmm, looks pretty good. Now let me remove that half and then we'll analyze in closer detail. Look at this. Sorry about the close-up shot, but I really wanted to stress what's important today uh, in that class. It's not about uh, that dough, even though it's beautiful, and puff pastry, but that's what you see here. This is the almond cream. That is the quintessential ingredient when you make these sort of preparations. So let me put that aside. Oh, which one is the best looking one? Well, let's take this one for instance, it doesn't really matter. Uh, so yeah, so basically you see, there's never enough of the cream and you see, look at that. You can sandwich it, flatten it, and that becomes almost like a, the ultimate almond sandwich. All right. And I don't want to be too messy because it's extremely messy to eat, uh, puff pastry, uh, as you can see here. It's all these thousand layers and uh, these leaves. But look at that. It's just full of almonds. I'm going to just... Uh. Love that stuff. Wow. It's still warm. You can see the shine on there. Mm -hmm. This is really the glazing we've had. And then when you get this piece, look at that. I just want to try to put on the camera and if you open, 
is all these layers of puff pastry mixed with that beautiful, and it's very light, huh, the almond mix. And look at that. It's a bit greasy, slightly with the butter. Mm. Mm. Very sugary and full of almond taste. You know, like, look at that. Oh, these layers. It is absolutely delicious. I'm actually almost addicted to that thing. When I make it, I'm always over it. But anyway, I'm not gonna go on about for too long on this. This is the cake, or this is the crème frangipane, and this specific almond filling made of, uh, you know, pastry cream and the almond cream that you use to fill all this preparation. And it's perfect to use with puff pastry, as you can see here. So. You can be much better than me. I've done rectangles. You can do circles. You can do triangles. You can do mini cakes. You can do big cakes. It's really up to you. Cooking time, always remember 10 minutes to start with on high heat. And then after that, it's usually 20. If you have a very big cake, it might take a little bit, maybe 30 minutes. And there's nothing set in stone. So just keep an eye on everything. But away from that, once you've made the cream, you're on for something beautiful. Honestly, try it. Kids and adults, it's always a success. If you don't eat the cake straight away, you can leave it to cool down, leave it at room temperature for several hours, and just before serving, just read up in the oven a little bit because you want to eat it with just a little bit of warmth. Like it has to be warm, but slightly. Very hot is not good. Cold is not good. Just that right temperature. So let's go almonds, let's go the big ravioli. I'll leave you with this and I'll see you all next time uh, for another French cooking recipe. I hope you enjoyed that one. See you all then for my next live. Actually, I think on Saturday something special is coming up. Take care all. Bye-bye. <laughs>